All right, guys. Welcome back. This is the ABS Grand Tournament, and we'll be going into our fifth match. No, sixth match, right? Am I mistaken? Sixth. No. Yeah. Sixth. Yeah. Yep. Roger versus Cipher. Uh, but before that, um, let me quickly make a brief of what is uh, ABS, because this is our host of the tournament, and uh, this is basically a calendar and go to place when it comes to esports. Uh, there are um, basically scheduling and uh, putting results for 10 different esports games and uh, recently they added smash bros 2 if you're into fighting games so you can check their site abiusgaming.com for recent results and you have everything in one place you have also chrome and firefox s extensions so you can be notified uh, for everything what is important and um yeah basically that's it um abius is doing a great job hosting this tournament and also a really important fact is that Apis will be doing different games, different tournaments too, on this channel. So if you want to be up to date about that, please follow uh, the channel and click the little heart button on Twitch. You know, that would be pretty cool. And now, let's see, let's hop in into those guys, uh, Roger and Cypher. Cypher is from Team Fate to Karma. What about Roger? Yeah, Roger is a member of a Taiwanese organization known as uh, Y.E. Spider. I believe it's just him and Pimping Ho who are the active players for it right now. Um, but yeah, they're a, they're a team out of Taiwan that obviously I'm not entirely in touch with the Asian scene, so I don't know too much about it. But um, mm -hmm. from Cypher's side, Fate to Karma is a relatively new organization, but have a very, very strong roster of players, and, and Cypher is no exception uh, to that, apart from uh, the recent uh, Gfinity that we both attended Lothar, he's been yeah. incredibly successful in, in almost every event he's entered. Just a really, really consistent run of results throughout the last six months or so. Um, so definitely be looking to make a, a big splash in this tournament as well. Mm -hmm. That's definitely true. Unfortunately, we don't have his camera, but we have a really cool picture, picture of him. Uh, <laughs> Cypher, though, um, recently joined... Recently? Well, that was like one, one month ago, right? Uh, Fate to Karma, which is formed by Toyda from Germany, a really cool player, mm -hmm. and Cypher is really doing great lately. He he was um, in a lot of tournaments, and uh, he's still like missing that really big win. Uh, so hopefully he will get it this time. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's just say something about lineups. They are pretty similar. What do you think, Sohu? Yeah, so we have Druid Warlock Paladin from Roger up against Druid Warlock Warrior from Cypher. Um, so. As the tournament's gone on, we're starting to uh, get into the more standard thing that we've been seeing for a couple of weeks now since the uh, since the inception of TGT, which is the uh, the Druid Warlock thing seems to be a thing that people pick, and then you see the patron players bring patron, and the people that uh, don't consider themselves patron players are bringing another deck, usually Paladin or Hunter. That seems to be like the solid lineup at the moment. Um, so no great surprises, no great talking points in this lineup. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of um, the the flex in their in their lineup is warrior versus paladin, and if that comes down as expected as patron warrior versus mysterious challenger paladin, the patron warrior is is quite comfortably favoured if they're playing things like double unstable ghoul in their deck. Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, well, the pass will be starting soon. I would guess that Roger will start with paladin and Cypher will start with the, with the warrior. That's my guess. What do you think? Uh yeah, it seems reasonable. Um, I I don't, I never really hate a druid lead. Um, so two players that bring druid, I wouldn't be surprised to see one of them lead with druid. But they might also feel like they need to protect the druid to go up against the the handlock and not not get the win out of the way with it early and use it as the handlock counter. So, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. oh, good call. Ha! Nice. Nailed it. One hundred ten percent nailed. Yep. Oh. Oh, and... that's a mid-range paladin. Now that's interesting. We'll be you'll be jumping into gameplay shortly, so bear with us. Yeah. <laughs> we have the information cut out. Yeah, apologies. You know, We're a I... little bit ahead of you here, <laughs> and we got a little bit excited because we see a quartermaster in uh, Roger's Mulligan here. So, uh, as well as a quality, which looks like this is a more mid-range paladin, but he's also playing an abusive sergeant. So very interesting uh, mixture of cards in his opening hand there for Roger. Uh, from Cipher, no know, big right? surprises. It might be misleading for his opponent. What does he play exactly? Right. You see, an abusive sergeant, but um, there is a quartermaster to seal the game. Because mm -hmm. no one is expecting that. Yep. Direwolf Alpha as well. Wow. Wow. 
So this, if okay, I'm gonna put my neck on the line here and say this is like a really token-focused mid-range paladin. Maybe With play warhorse trainer. Uh, warhorse trainer, maybe silverhand regent, maybe to get the extra one ones on the board. The uh, the neutral three three that summons an extra one one with inspire. Uh, that has to be some Asian meta, meta guy. Right. And, you know, we, we've talked about, like, the, the small differences between the NA meta and the EU meta with things like Brawl and Patron. Uh, but the Asia server, more than any other one... Oh, sorry, the Asian meta, or the, the Asian ladder server, if you're just talking about ladder, is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's way more... has a tendency to be way more out there than, than NA and EU combined. They, they tend to be the most uh, polarized of the, of the three big regions and tend to focus more on playing their own things and have their own little ideas about what's good and what isn't, so... True. Um, Acolyte of Pain to challenge this 1-1 one -one seems like a pretty nice thing to do. Um, is he gonna axe down or just leave the Acolyte there to challenge it? I think you just leave it. Just leave it there, yeah. yeah. It doesn't have too much information. Double equality in this deck as well, which, again, I suppose makes sense if you're playing a deck that's intending to flood the board with 1-1s one all the time. Right? It makes sense, but if you want to use it correctly, I think this is the turn. Yeah. Yeah, I think when you have two of them in your hand, you're probably mm -hmm, only mm -hmm. going to need one to wipe out a, a big patron board if he goes for that. Um, you know, if, if it comes to the point where, you know, the second big board appears, you've probably died already. So keeping both the qualities for two board wipes is probably a little bit ambitious. So yeah, I like just denying potentially two card draws off the Acolyte there by using the equality. Definitely true, but uh, at the same time, you will probably keep the Master for Battle for turn 8. I would say, so like turn 4 will look like a Direwolf Alpha Hero Power. Right, because you're not just going to like play out the Murloc Knight to be exposed to, yeah. to a slam, an inner rage, you know, a death fight to come down and overwrite this Fiery War Axe. We might even see Cypher with all the weapons he has in his hand just swing at face with this Fiery War Axe, but no. Feels like he's going to get full value out of all of these weapon charges and just holds on to it. I don't blame him. I mean, he doesn't know what kind of um, pattern he's uh, facing. But after the zombie chow, he'll be definitely sure what type of pattern it is, so he can now change his play accord uh, accordingly, right? Right. Um, I think drawing the zombie chow there made the muster for battle look a lot more appealing, just because of the the curve reasons. Mhm. Mm and um, and uh, oh, never mind. Hi. I mean, <laughs> that's probably the way we'll turn, right? Yeah, I think we probably start with uh, at least one battle rage. Definitely enough mana this turn to spend some on drawing some cards. Drawing four cards seems like a perfectly reasonable response if you don't see anything else that you'd rather do. Um, yeah. yeah, let's just draw another two cards, right? Why not? I think so, right. Then you have still a mana for Wayland. Yep. And you know that this, it is a mid-range, so you would definitely want to Wayland that, because why would you play into a Quartermaster, right? Mm-hmm. You can clear the board and basically do whatever you want next turn because you just gained four cards for four mana. Yep, and especially having just drawn the second whirlwind, there's now even less harm in throwing away the first one because you know any patrons, any frothings that you draw into with two death spites and another whirlwind in your hand already, you have plenty of resources for uh, activating the synergies in your deck. Yep, definitely true. Um, so he's just going to play out a Murloc Knight here just to get some sort of pressure on the board because he has nothing really else better to do, but it's just going to get gobbled up nice and clean by uh, one of these two Death Spites that we see in Cypher's hand. There we go. Death Spite comes down, cleans up the Murloc Knight. Uh, nothing else to do, so we'll just armor pass this turn. And look at that! Cypher got to draw four cards off Battle Rage and then kill a zombie chow and restore himself to full health. That's pretty awesome, right? Seems like a good plan. Yep. Especially when you, you're out of Battle Rages. Yep. But, Roger has the Duck to Boom on turn 7. He does, but at this point, is it going to be enough? He's, he's already dug so deep through his deck that even though he doesn't have too much action going on in his hand right now, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the rest of the cards in his deck are so dense, you know, there's still Emperor, double frothing, double uh, uh, patron in there. So there you go, straight away. One card drawn, one frothing comes out the deck. Um, so yeah, his deck is really dense with the cards that he wants to be drawing right now, that um, he's going to build up the damage he needs to win the game pretty quickly. As an inner rage, pretty useful as well. 
Do you even attack this turn? I mean, you're, no. you're, you're pretty happy, right? Just to let him you're get up the board. 34 HP. Why yep. would you even care about those minions? Yep. You just wait for him to fill up the board so you can just play the ridiculous prodding berserker? Mm -hmm. Yep, I completely agree with you. Absolutely no threat at all from these minions. Cypher is probably just con um, considering pretty much what we did at the start of the game. This is the first really weird card he's seen come onto the board. It's like, okay, that's a direwolf alpha. So he's just considering everything that that means. And uh, hmm. based on his conclusions, he decides it's better to trade here. Um, okay, interesting approach. Yep. I mean, now he has to use the whirlwind to kill the... Um kill the Dr. Boom unless he wants to attack into it? Uh, I mean, he can use the Inner Rage if he wants, but it's a pretty... Do you? It's a, it, no, just, if he wants, it's a, a, it's a pretty valuable resource, but, um, you know, honestly, at 40 health, you're probably fine just slamming into it and uh, and face tanking the 7 damage. Um, just to preserve the Inner Rage in your hand, just because, you know, you're, you're so close to threatening lethal already that you'd value your own health a lot lower than that Inner Rage, most likely. Let me just go face, right? Face is also entirely viable, but I think at some point you want to tidy up those boom bots before you yeah, try and next turn. try and <laughs> right. But like, if you're swinging, if you're swinging face with the death spite, it's to set up a lethal next turn. And do you really want to risk going for the lethal next turn when the boom bots are on board? Mm, that's uh, a good question. The important question, actually, does he have guarantee? Can he use one whirlwind first and still have lethal, like whirlwind before he plays his stuff on the board, and then have lethal? Uh, with the follow-up whirlwind from the death spite. But that will leave only two minions on board. Right, so I don't think that's going to be enough, right? No, that's not enough. No. Definitely not enough. So if he does want to go for the lethal this turn, he is leaving himself open to uh, to the Hearthstone gods to decide. Well, he plays three minions, right? They are most of two, so... Yep. What are the odds of that happening? I mean, they're kind of high, because you... Probably even one damage is relevant. I mean, sorry, uh, two damage, two is, damage relevant, is relevant. Two damage is relevant, yeah. Because you can't play... A second whirlwind effect. Yeah. Without killing your um, berserker. So what about enraging the bomb, and then playing berserker, armor smith, war song commander? How much damage is that? Uh, so there'd be seven minions on board for the first whirlwind. So the frothing would go to nine, and then there would be five minions on board for the second. So it would go to fourteen. Plus the death bite is 18, and then you can trade the armor smith, and that's 20, so that's not enough. Oh wait, he goes just for the... What? This is an Why? interesting line. Why would you play that? And rip Frothing Berserker, okay. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, um, it's very weird. You have to... You... Whoa. You play. Why would you keep the armor smith? I was gonna say you have to charge the armor smith at the knife juggler now, right? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, weird things happen that turn, Lothar, and I'm not sure how I feel about them. Mm -hmm. I feel that that um, that was just, but that was just a bad decision. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I don't say that often, but yeah, that that was just really weird. It definitely did look like a very very messy choice of turn from Cypher. Um, obviously he got punished by, you know, the Frothing Berserker dying, which, you know, you can blame RNG all you want, but mm -hmm. essentially he maximized his chances of that happening. He had various lines that he can take that all reduced that the chances of that happening by various degrees, and he went for the one that had the highest possible opportunity for his Frothing Berserker to mm -hmm. die. That was why I, that's why I was favoring the inner rage on bomb before you play the minions. Right. Um, that wouldn't have been lethal though, so I mean, Yeah, it wouldn't have been, but if you're gonna have... make that play, you probably don't end up charging the Frothing Berserker anyway. Um, but I mean without without him playing the the armor smith, did he have lethal with whatever he was trying to do? Um, no, there's no way. Very, very weird turn from Cypher. I'm not sure what his idea was there. Tyrion is Still standing on the board. Yep. I mean, that's a really big obstacle. Five mana arcane intellect comes down from Roger. Uh, does Did pick he up... want to kill something on the board before playing the uh, Solemn Vigil? Uh, I mean, you can, you can play Trusova. No, you didn't have to Trusova Champion, but you, you can attack with Tyrion. Yeah, you can attack with the Tyrion to a Nobish Inventor or just mm -hmm. Armor Smith. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe that means this this uh, Tyrion's going face. But you have to kill the armor smith, and yeah. that was the only option before your draw. Right. And the only option after the draw was actually Truth of a Champion. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Well, it worked out for him. 
It did. It worked out fine. Uh, I think one of these inner rages almost certainly has, has to, to be used on the acolyte. Yeah. Has to be used on the acolyte. You need to draw more cards, and those need to be That's a patron or executes. <laughs> yep. Um, so draw the second card off the acolyte. Looks like the play. Yep. And then we'll go ahead and execute this thing. Will we? Are we happy to fiery war axe it and take six damage? Uh, I, well, you, there's no reason to be threatened by the paladin. Oh, oh, wait, oh okay, never mind. I mean, you're going to give him Ashbringer, damage. right? You're yeah. giving him Ashbringer. That is 15 damage. So That's 15 damage, and you lost one uh, ammo smith and one shield block. He used both shield blocks. He used them both on oh, the same turn. Okay. Yeah. So then his life is really limited when it comes to um, amount of life gain. Yep, absolutely. Hmm. Um, but at the same time, you know that your opponent will use the uh, Ashbringer to bring down uh, Emperor. the Emperor. Yeah, I was just about to say he is playing a 5-5 Torf this turn, essentially. So that, that is bringing him back to life a little bit. So that Ashbringer is only going to do 10 damage max to his face, which starts to make it a little bit more reasonable. But wow, Roger, absolutely no fear of patrons right now. Just mm -hmm. double haunted creeper, like the absolute best minion that a patron warrior can ever see. He just slams two of them on the board. Absolutely no fear at all. He has a quality, but he's missing the the consecration. Yeah, I would say this is like a really valid play when you have consecration the quality in your hand, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, it's really risky when you don't. Right. <laughs> Slamming his own uh, gnomish inventor since it's the only thing he can actually slam right now to draw a card, and now he cycles into the second slam, mm -hmm. which unfortunately has no targets anymore. Yeah, well, you can play your ghoul and slam that, but that's <laughs> yeah. That seems That's... counterintuitive. He's trying yes. to draw more damage to win the game, and Unstable Ghoul is a lot of damage if he picks up a second Frothing Berserker. So that seems a little bit counterintuitive. Well, now we can Quartermaster get a 2 free freeze on board. That's really cool. Yep. I like it. And he's going to oh. go ahead and pop the spiders. Okay. And not he will not play the Quartermaster. Why? What? I mean, what's the reason to not play Quartermaster to deal four damage? Uh, sorry, two damage instantly and build up two minions that are not dying to anything that can your opponent play. I mean, he doesn't have lethal next turn this way. He would have. And now he dies. And now he dies. Yeah. I mean. Oh, well, he, it, would it, it, anyway. he wouldn't have made yeah. a difference, right? But, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but the important thing is that he doesn't set up lethal because there's no room on the board for him to play that abusive sergeant. So. Um, yeah. No. No idea why he chose not to go with the uh, the quartermaster that turn. Very very. Well, it's very related. It's very related in Payfan anyway, right? I mean. Uh... Yeah. I mean, do we do we need to be in a raging right now, Cipher? This 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 seems superfluous. <laughs> this seems ever so slightly unnecessary. Okay. All right. Fine. Five over. One overkill. Yep. So, uh, Cypher was not punished for playing the turn with uh, first Frothing Berserker, because mm -hmm. he did draw the second one, and that was enough to seal the game. Yep. And it's not better for Roger, because the Midrange Paladin is not the best deck against patrons anyway. So, I can see him like not really caring about this one, right? Yeah. And patron usually wins a game, so... Right. Um, you know, some people sometimes talk about like maybe it even being bad for a deck to have won because you know you, you need it to get like a key win later against a specific matchup. I mean, that's mm -hmm. never that's never quite true. It's never bad for a deck to have won. Exactly what I wanted to say. But what there are, yeah, what there is is there's like important wins and not very important wins. And what just happened there with the with the patron warrior beating mid range paladin, that's not a particularly important win for Cypher because yeah. patron patron warrior will probably win a game over the course of a of a, a series, and he's won a very very favored matchup. So it's not like he's picked up in a win in a game that he wasn't supposed to, which is normally where uh, conquest sets are usually decided. Yeah, that's true. Um, as usually, on spot. But we'll be jumping into the game. Next one. Leaving roots into Darkness' Aspirant. Well, that's kind of okay against Handlock. Right. Mm. Um, until Mortal Coil Dart Bomb comes down, and then you haven't really got anywhere. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, because he's allowed to play that Mortal Coil on turn one for free, because it just recycles on a turn that he wouldn't draw a card with life tap anyway. Yeah, then, that's a good deal. Because he has the coin, he needs to spend a card on either turn two or turn three anyway. He can't just tap on both of those turns. So actually, that exchange works out perfectly fine for him, and he can still just continue to tap and still play a turn four Mountain Joe. Mm -hmm. And Roger is really having a hard time finding like a correct curve for Droid, which is something Droid wants to do every single turn. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's looking wow. really okay. Wow, wow. He gets to okay. cycle the second Mortal Coil out of his deck as well. That's fantastic. So yeah, tap. he taps. And after all of that, he's now tapped the Mountain Giant down to five mana. So then the next card he draws and it's four. So after spending three cards in his opening turns, he still gets to play a Mountain Giant on turn four. What a deck. Hmm. But still, there is a combo, potential combo of 10-7. So if... Roger can deal enough damage on turn 7. Mm -hmm. This might be the game. It might be, but we do see there are two taunt givers in Cypher's hand if he, you know, does want to play around innovate combo, but Wait, wait, wait. Why would you play Druid of the Claw in taunt mode in this situation? Uh there is absolutely no merit. zero reason. The only yes. thing you play around is Dark Bomb Mortal Coil when you've seen two Mortal Coils and a Dark Bomb be used. And Hellfire, maybe, but... Hellfire, what? No, there's no reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's there's absolutely no reason there's, to there's play that reason. as a taunt. Because yeah. you're sure that your opponent will attack into that unless he wants to Shadow Flame this, but he will attack into the Path Shredder and then Shadow Flame it. Mm -hmm. So there's absolutely no reason to not deal with damage for two to the face as particularly right like I'm, I'm a big advocate of just doing what your hand does and right now this hand throws a lot of damage at the handlock's face and if he doesn't have the right answers to stop you killing him yeah you, you just you win on you, you win on turn seven right um so I... now you still have enough damage for turn seven right but, but, but you would have done more damage yeah, and also, like, you, you have enough damage because you've got a very, very lucky Big Game Hunter draw, right? And mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. if you hadn't have drawn the Big Game Hunter, you would have been in pretty serious problems. Um, no. So, yeah, Cypher does have to make the read and protect himself this turn, or he will die. Uh, thankfully for him, most of his good plays do involve taunting a minion this turn. <laughs> I, I mean... Um... The one reason to play the Druid of the Claw in taunt mode is to not give away the strategy of comboing on turn 7. Sure. But that's like kind of um, maybe overthinking it. Yeah, maybe. And I think also if you're if you're Cypher, I think if you see a 4-4 charge come down, you can respect that as the right play because you've seen both Mortal Coils and a Dark Bomb happen. Oh, and he didn't... No, he, he did. did. He did. Okay, never mind. Uh, but is he still dead? No, he does a Malganus. Oh, because Malganus, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that's, um... Wait, what? 16, that's 20. You're not going to lethal if you do that. He's not going to combo. Uh, no, no, he's not. Wait. What? Why? <laughs> I don't know. Well, that helps. Um, but why would you combo and just kill the Malganus? Uh, because then you can't combo face afterwards? Yeah, but you would want to play to win this turn, right? Mm -hmm. Even if there's a Malganus, there's like, there's a small chance there's a Malganus, and even right. if, there, if there's a Malganus, you tried to win the game, and in the worst canal, you just killed the Malganus. He still, his other minion that he didn't trade with was a 3-2, right? Yes. So if it wasn't Malganus, he can still combo after, and it's still lethal. I mean, he would have just used the 3-2 to, to uh, sorry, um, one of the taunts, uh, three ends, sorry, to kill the Void Caller. And he would still have the big game hunter on board with six damage, mm -hmm. and he would just could have just used phase to kill it. Right, but there's the, what I'm saying is there's no need to commit to the play first because if you pop the void caller with the big game hunter and say a doom guard comes out or nothing comes out, you still have lethal by comboing afterwards. So you might as well get full information. Okay, on the yeah, turn. yeah. Sorry, misunderstood you. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely right. You might you, you just get full information on the turn and then decide whether you're comboing or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, you have a point there. Um, so he's just going to Wrath, clear out the Malganus here, and he is again threatening lethal. Um, he is uh, one damage off next turn. 
Uh, no, because he, 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 he has the innovate. Yeah, so he, has the, he doesn't need the innovate for his mana anymore, so he can just use it to sneak in the extra one damage with the hero power. So Cypher again is forced to make a defensive play if he wants to stay alive, but yet again, he has quite a lot of pretty good defensive plays in his hand. Mm -hmm. And it's, maybe he's not necessarily reading into and one additional damage, because there was no innovate used early on when there might have been a good spot for it. Right. So he might be not doing that, but he might have just used Void Color and anti killbot and that's enough. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, this is plenty. There is nothing inside that uh, Void Caller, as far as we can see right now, but, you know, Roger does not know that, and having just seen a Keeper come down, um, this is a pretty solid minion. And if it does bait the second Keeper in this situation, sure, because you're not losing anything from it anyway. Yep. Hmm. So he's going to decide to wrath it. Does this mean it's not getting silenced? He's just going to cycle on it. And is this for silence or for damage? I mean, for damage because you want to use the hero power, right? Oh, he's not going to get Chosen to silence it. Okay, so second silence successfully baited out. And now if he taunts up something like a Twilight Drake, he knows that they are protected from, from Keeper of the Grove. So um, Cypher will not be too unhappy with how that went. But yet again, he is forced to make defensive plays. And we now see the full double combo in Roger's hand and he's going into 10 mana. So he has the 12 mana available to play that next turn for 22 damage from an enemy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's pretty scary. What are the Cypher options? He can play another Healbot? Oh, that's not necessarily that good, right? Uh, you can attack in Hellfire, but that, then you still die. It doesn't feel great either. Yeah. Uh, he's just not picking up any particularly high value minions here, and... This can sometimes happen. Um, I do find playing the Demon Handlock sometimes that because of the lack of Belchers and some of the, the tech stuff like Lower Theb or Sylvanas as well, you do sometimes find yourself just a little bit minion-like. You get those draws where you just don't quite get the threats. Or, you know, you draw Malganis and uh, and Jaraxxus, for example, but you can't really just slam them on, on turn 7 or turn 8 or something like you could with a with a Belcher plus a utility card. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's the situation that we see uh, Cypher in here. He's going to go choose to go with the Hellfire. I like using the Hellfire over the Shadow Flame there. Uh, Shadow Flame generally a much better card against Druid, and also the only threat in his hand is the Molten Giant. But unfortunately, it turns out in this position, it's exactly the wrong play because he's going to die to double combo. But honestly, can There's you play no around banner. double combo? I'm always saying this. Yep. You can't play around double combo. You can't play around innovate combo unless your opponent deliberately plays really something bad and it, like chooses to, to make a subpar play yep. just to deal more damage to you. And unless it's literally the only way you lose the game, right? In, yeah. in that mm -hmm. case, like mm -hmm. just play around it for the sake of it. So. Yeah. But otherwise, it's just... Uh, you, you can't do it. It's like playing around Harrison Jones when your opponent is five cards deep into the deck. Yeah, I, I managed to play on stream the other day that lost to uh, double combo plus an innovated um, Keeper of the Grove with various cards that have been emperored to silence a Taunted Molten Giant. And I died at 15 health behind a Taunted 9-9. And I could, <laughs> I could have played around that by playing Healbot instead of Jaraxxus. But I was trying to tell the stream, no, what I did was correct. Because in no world do I play around that nonsense happening. Yeah, that's true. And now we're jumping to a new match. Demon, uh, sorry, a Dragon Warlock against Demon Handlock. Wow, all right. A, a lot of suffixes. Yeah, adjective modifiers central right now. Um, so yeah, we, we see probably the, the Malagos lock from Roger coming up against uh, Demon Handlock from Cypher. Generally, this is a matchup that the... Um, Dragon Warlock the has Dragon an upper Warlock, hand. Yeah, right? has a pretty serious advantage in. Um, the reason, one of the big reasons to bring uh, Malagos Warlock to uh, tournaments is it's kind of like the king of the Warlock decks when they all face off against each other. Mm -hmm. Malagos Warlock is the one that tends to come out on top in on most of the matchups. Um, so he has a, a nice matchup here to deny another win from uh, from Cypher's Handlock, potentially. Usually, usually uh, the Dragon Warlocks are playing double Beacon Hunters, right? Yeah. And this is such a huge swing. Mm -hmm. But we don't see an, a single one from Roger, a Roger in hand. He has a new nice cube, though. 
a Twilight Guardian into double Blackwing Corruptors. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, but yeah, there are two big game, has big game hunters in the deck. And uh, the reason behind that is to make this matchup really favorable. Right. And you also generally play um, the, the odd card like an abusive sergeant in your deck. So for the matchups where the big game hunters are a little bit dead, you can at least use them to snipe down like a, mm -hmm. an Emperor Thorasan or a Lower Theb with, exactly. with the abusive yeah. sergeant alongside it. Exactly. Um, but yeah, the other reason why Malagos Lot does so well in this, this deck is, uh, sorry, in this matchup is just the amount of burst they're packing in the deck. Because, um, you know, Handlock is a deck that by nature has to play a little bit fast and loose with their life total. And then as soon as Emperor comes down from the Malagos Lock, you, you kind of have to play around a reasonable amount of damage. And that means, you know, maintaining your life total at a, a reasonably high point, which then means that you can't get your Molten Giants down onto the board effectively. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It all just spirals out of control. Yep. Completely agree here. Uh, what do you think about killing just the Void Color here? The, um, the deck has no means to deal with a high health minion, right? I mean, unless it's uh, it has seven attack. Mm -hmm. So, it, uh, but leaving out a void caller is not great either. Either when the opponent says when he can trigger it. Right. right. I kind of like the Twilight Guardian play because that at least um, you know asks a question of Roger to ha sorry of uh, Cipher to find some creative way to pop his void caller if he really wants mm -hmm, to do it mm -hmm. like a mortal core maybe yeah. hellfire hellfire right? yeah shadow flame that sort of thing um so yeah I, I like this play i think popping it and, and having a malganis come out right now is just too dangerous with the the lack of damage you have to deal with it if a malganis comes out right now then you can use the black one of the black wing corruptors next turn to immediately deal the three to it and just finish it off with the big game hunter that big game hunter will have traded for uh two massive minions if that ended up happening so uh yeah i, I kind of like the play of just uh ignoring it for now and, and denying the value of it yeah good play but now the, the silence coming down and the trade will be done also well that's quite unfortunate or is it uh i think that's probably the better one because honestly in the late game how much value does setting yourself to 15 have against malagos warlock you're just gonna die right yeah probably not a lot mm -hmm. So getting it on the board for free is probably actually in this matchup specifically a lot better than activating it as a battle cry. And now Roger has to find a way to deal with the 416 minion. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? I mean, the silence deals to damage and decreases the attack, but otherwise you... I don't know. Yeah, who knows? It looks like this thing is just going to have to get uh, plowed through the hard way and 16 damage is going to have to be dealt to that Jaraxxus at some point. Yeah. In, in the parallel universe, Droid is like weeping. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, 16 health, no! And then a warrior comes in and is like, execute. Yeah. In, easy, in, a, in a further parallel universe, everyone has started playing Black Knight again and no one cares about <laughs> 460. <laughs> Try hard. So, Dr. Boom coming down here. Seems pretty legit to uh, hide two Boombots and a 7-7 behind this ridiculous taunt right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he says, I'm not messing around with any of this board. My 416 is hitting you in the face. That's your problem to deal with. But I would yeah, say... Well, he, will, he will kill the Imp. Yeah, I was, I was certainly expect the Defender of Argus to pick up a trade. But in terms of that 416 minion, like, there's no point in letting the Malagos, you know, giving him help in terms of dealing the 16 damage to it. He might as well just stick him in the face. Wow! Oh, oh look at that. Never mind. It's he does not died, care. Apparently. I mean, I wouldn't even kill that because you have bombs. Right. So the bombs have better targets. Yeah, that's very true. Hmm. No, no but okay. Yeah, I think this is fine. Um, we've seen Roger has retained the coin all the way through. Coin's a pretty useful card, because even under Emperor conditions, some of the Malagos combos can end up being quite tight, and that extra one mana from the coin can be really useful. Um, but he's going to go ahead and owl off the, the, the taunt. That's basically nothing to do with, you know, removing plus one, plus one from the minion. He just wants to get at the other minions on the board right now, because they're the ones he can remove. So by silencing off the taunt, he makes the 315 Jaraxxus something that is actually ignorable because it's not actually doing that much damage to him every turn. And he's just going to focus on dealing with the rest of the board. So I think this is probably the correct response to the situation. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so and now, like the the hours of bla blessing from heaven, because otherwise you would be not able to deal with this situation at all. Right. <laughs> and yeah, it's gonna you spend the coin here. Like I said, the coin is pretty valuable when you've carried it this far. But yeah, the the tempo play here of getting the the Blackwing Corruptor on board and then following up with the Mortal Coil was uh, just pretty powerful. So suddenly, mm -hmm. Cipher's big push has kind of fallen apart here. Yeah, and he's falling down on health too, because mm. you can deal slowly with the lesser minions on board. The bomb can have a really huge impact here, because if it, an example, kills the Blackwing Corruptor, then you're not being pushed to use the Dark Bomb, right. or you can just use the Dark Bomb to into the Blackwing Corruptor to attack the, with the bomb to the Blackwing Corruptor. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is a pretty clean board clear here, and he then attacks the Boombot into the 2-1, tries to snipe off mm -hmm, the Drake mm -hmm. in Dreamworld. You know, as long as he gets one damage to it, it's fine. He can get the clear with the Jaraxxus. In Dreamworld, where he gets four, he's suddenly in a really, really good position, and if it um, does even do the one to it, he can choose to dart bomb. Uh, oh, oh, nicely done. All right, in this case, I think you just tap instead. Yeah, that was a, yep. actually a better option to attack with the bomb first. Was it... I think it was because a 2 1 minion is not really that threatening, right? And you have 100% right. chance of dealing with the Twilight Ring. Right. Yeah, no, yeah, that's the important part. That's true. So, um, attacking into the 2 1 gives you a 50 50 of hitting the Twilight mm -hmm, Drake mm -hmm. instead of a 33% yeah. chance. But yeah, the point you brought up at the end, it doesn't matter because you can 100% deal with it anyway if you just attack into it. So, yeah, you're totally yeah. right. And now, well, this Jorax is going to be taunted up second time. Yep. Um, what about... I mean, Healbot is not really that great, because you have one Molten Giant in your hand. Mm -hmm. mm, um, so what if you just tap and Mortal... Uh, sorry, uh, Dark Bomb the Emperor trade? Uh... And then you can follow it up with the Molten Giant. Because you uh, need you need the threat on the board, right? The only concern, just look, just trying to live in uh, Cipher's head. This game, he's seen Emperor happen just now. So how scared is he of just outright dying next turn? But he no. didn't see a single, um, a single projectile from Roger yet, right? Right. Um, so you'll be probably dead from twenty-two anyway. Uh, not with nine mana though, right? Oh yeah, good point. Yeah. Uh, nine mana, he can only go Malagos, Dart Bomb, Soulfire, if that was the contents of his hand. He couldn't cast the second Dart Bomb as well. So the, the heal bot play does play around that. Okay, you're right. Um, but, you know, there is there is merit to, like, you know, what's the argument of saying if, if, I, if you're going to play around Malagos combo for every turn for the rest of the game, are you going to win? That's what I want to just bring up. Like, usually what I say is you have to play to win, right? And yep. we saw Tice playing today like this. Mm -hmm. and, well, he lost. But <laughs> um, in this situation, as you also said, what's your plan to win? Because you have to be defensive every single turn, and then your opponent draws more, card, more cards, so he has more options to kill you. If you would play the Molten Giant on the last turn, you're putting your opponent on the clock. Right. Because the one Molten Giant just can straight win the game. Right. By attacking just face. Yeah, and, and you know you don't have to worry about Molten Giants from your opponent. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's the distinction I tried to make last turn. It's just like, you know, living in Cypher's head, I think it's reasonable for him to be scared of Malagos, but I I don't think that makes what he did right, even though logically it makes sense. You know, there's a there's a logical progression of Cypher's thought process that explains the play he made. But, you know, when you really break it down, like, don't you just have to commit and just say there's no Malagos and just hope to win the game that way? Mm -hmm. um, but it turns mm -hmm. out that like this is a pretty nice looking board for him here, and he's in fact threatening to push Lethal back the other way to uh, onto Roger. So it might be that Cipher's line is going to work out just fine for him here. But Roger does have multiple options to try and tidy up this board, but it does dramatically reduce the reach of his Malagos if he starts using things like the Dart Bomb here. True, uh, that's a very good point. Again, and. Uh... But he has to deal with as as many minions as possible. Yep. 
Um, I wouldn't hate to say... Oh, he's going to use the Shadow Flay. Oh, yes, yeah, I didn't actually spot this play, I'll be honest, but that is definitely the most efficient way to do this. I was well, looking at using an Implosion that play, but yeah, that is that is definitely the best way to go about it. To be honest, we're after six matches. Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah we've been doing this a while. Uh, we're casting for four, six hours already, more than six hours. So yeah, we're, we're kind of getting, you know, exhausted too. Yeah. And still, still, we have three matches ahead. I mean, including this one. Yeah, two more after this one, yeah. yeah. Um, mm. So suddenly, the reach is starting to build up in Cypher's hand. He has Hellfire here to deal three, and then he has a follow-up eight from the Dark Bomb and the Doom Guard. Yeah, but the Molten Drives are still far away. Yep. <laughs> and, yep, good good matchup knowledge here from, from Cypher. He knows there are no big game Hunter targets in Malagos Warlock, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can just play out big game Hunter as a Jungle Panther, no problem. Definitely. Well, I was Jungle Panther, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, a Jungle Panther you can actually see, as opposed to what Jungle Panther. Wow. A watch. I'm sorry, a taunted up Jungle <laughs> Panther. Okay. Which dice implosion? Uh, and yeah, this threatens lethal, so I can totally understand this play. Um, just oh. the 2-3 the, the on board wasn't about taunting the big game hunter, it was about putting lethal on the board. Right? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. um, and there's a reason, like, you want to read into that, right? Mm -hmm. Because why would you play the Sunfield Protector at that point? Um, but yeah, one, one owl was being played, right? Uh, one owl has been played, yeah. We just saw a Hellfire last turn as well, so the Implosion is looking pretty nice and secure on the board. Um, pretty nice high roll four. Obviously wasn't relevant in killing the big game hunter, but just nice to have the four one ones on the board, because why wouldn't you want four one ones instead of two? It's just the, the level of swinginess of Implosion, right? The double reward that you get when it rolls high. Uh, it's just pretty punishing sometimes. Mm -hmm. But there's no really um, a good way of balancing this card, because if you give it always free damage and free minions, mm -hmm. it seems like a really too powerful card for four mana, because basically reads it's a fire elemental for free ma for four mana without just you know a smaller body. So it's sure. like a black corruptor with no need to um, to have a, a dragon in the hand, right? Sure. And then if you do if you do the thing where you like invert the damage, so two damage yeah. two damage gets four imps, four damage gets two imps, then that that's... card that card is just a mess when you try and read it. So and that's not even the point. I think the card is even better when you have a two damage four implo four imps mm -hmm. and four damage two imps. It makes the card even better. It makes the card more consistent. Really? Yeah. Because then you always have a good output. That's true. This card. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, anyway, in the meantime, uh, Cypher chose to do something quite rare for a handlock deck, which is actually play Doomguard from his hand and discard two very high value cards. Uh, at least one Molten Giant got discarded. Mm -hmm. uh, not mm -hmm. something the handlock is happy to do, so he's obviously feeling the pressure in this matchup. Uh, and we do see Malagos come into hand, but only the Dark Bomb or all the Soulfire is able to be cast with it. Um, and the reason, what I want to bring up here, the reason why he was pushed to play the Doomguard from hand was uh, that he didn't opt to play the Mountain Giant on the turn when the first Hillbot was built. Very true, yeah, very, very true. And that's the reason why he is now faltering back mm -hmm. on everything. That he, he, like his game plan was just falling apart. Yep, I totally agree with you. Um, so the only play here that keeps him alive is, is Healbot, so we're kind of back in that same point where, you know, do you really want to play just to live, or is it now time to to make the big boy play and get the Molten Giant out on the board? At which point you almost certainly die. The, the Malagos lock has drawn so many cards at this point, um, and one spell with Malagos, either a Dark Bomb or a Soulfire, is enough to kill you at this point. Yep. A lot of options to finish off the game. Mm-hmm. By the way, that's a really long game too. Yeah, so it's been a bit of a marathon, but you know, two very slow paced, pretty heavy control decks fighting against each other that both have pretty solid answers to each other's stuff. Uh, it's kind of expected that the matchup will go the distance. And Cypher has decided, um, probably in our opinion, several turns too late, that it's time yeah. to, to make the big boy play and get the, mount, the Molten Giant on board, and he's just gonna die to, uh, to Malagos and what, whichever spell uh, Okay, he's just not There's even no going to show the Malagos. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. And that's it. Roger takes the third game and will be 
playing against, uh, I mean, we'll be playing with um, the Paladin, right? He did one with the Druid and with the Warlock. Yep, and he lost with the Paladin against uh, yes. Patron. So the so. Paladin, Midrange Paladin, will be playing against a Handlock or a Druid. Correct. Yep, because the Patron Warrior has picked up the win. So this uh, slightly funky mid-range Paladin build from Roger with a, a lot of extra buff cards in it, the Abusive Sergeant and the Direwolf. Be interested to see if there's like a uh, Dark Iron Dwarf in that deck as well. Cause that's, or uh, Seal of Champions, because I love Seal of Champions, card. yeah. Um, it's really the, one of the best cards that Paladin got from the GT expansion. Yeah, it really is like absolutely broken in Arena. Like it's it's just an absurd card in arena. Uh, yeah, I was waiting for the second part of that sentence. I was just absolutely broken. I was what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, but yeah, I agree with you. I, I have a side business as an arena role player, Lothar, so I, I do know about <laughs> these things. Um, okay. Yeah, so we're gonna go with the mid range paladin against the handlock. Pretty uh, comfortable matchup for the handlock overall. Um, but we did see double equality in this build from the, the mid-race yes. paladin. Yes, we that will help a lot, but generally you can still kind of starve out those sort of things, and then finally, like, Jaraxxus will come down and seal uh, seal the deal after you've um, yeah. seen that's, both qualities come out. That's why I always say that the paladin has to be the aggressor here, yeah. and you have just to, you know, put the blinds on your on their eyes like a, like a horse and just go straight forward and plow through that... HPs. <laughs> just just use the uh, the face hunter training bracket that you can get. Yes, yeah, exactly. Just just that, cover the screen. Yeah. So if you don't get those mini bots and pilot shredders uh -huh. and buster for battle for maximum damage, mm -hmm. it's really really looking grim. Yep. Um, Mortal coil here is nice. He is gonna have to either choose to play that. Okay, now he can coin Drake if he wants to. But wait, that... wait, what? Now? Couldn't drive. Oh, no, sorry. No, no, he can't. He's spent the Mortal Coil already. Um, so he has to either spend one of the, the two playable cards in his hand, um, the Owl or the Mortal Coil, if he wants to coin a tap, or he can just pass. And I, yeah, I like pass in that situation. Hmm. Reporting for duty. And yeah, obvious misplay. Didn't coin Giant. Yeah, obviously. Yep. Uh, well, this looks like a Giant. No, is it? Giant coil seems reasonable. Yeah, it seems like better than Twilight Drake coin mortal coil, right? Right. Well, you can play. You can play the giant Nexon anyway. I'm not sure. I mean, both seem reasonable. Yeah, and I mean, either way, you can mortal coil first and just see if that changes anything. But he's going to go with the giant here. But main maintains the coin in his hand, which I think is probably the tiebreaker overall. Mm -hmm. um, By the way, du double solemn vigil. Yeah, it, like this has to be a token generation deck, right? It just it's the only. Well, it thing has that makes muscle sense. battle, right? Yeah, it and has it muscle has battle, hero power. but it needs more than that, right? To make all this stuff worth it, the direwolves and the abusive sergeants, double solemn vigil. Well, you're we talking about the um, free mana, free free. Uh, what's the name? Uh, Silverhand region. Wow, never would have never would have thought of that. So yeah, uh, that might be the option, mm. or I guess he already has Murloc Knight. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, one equality used already. Um, so, you know, fairly safe in the knowledge that he has the second equality in the deck somewhere, but still, that is uh, a pretty low value equality, even though it, they do seven damage for two mana. So. Um, and this, like, the merit of him keeping the coin last turn is that it lets him coin Emperor this turn, which is just a, a pretty strong follow up to just about anything. But with uh with a full handlock hand packed full of you know seven and nine mana cards looks like a pretty strong play right now <laughs> yeah the sarcasm was real i mean not even sarcasm. <laughs> so um you want to trade for that but at the same time you want to sacrifice as much minions as possible just to use this solemn vi uh, solemn vigil right yeah so he's going to choose to trade the extra one one instead of using mm -hmm. the dire wolf mm -hmm. Um, now he can Solemn Vigil twice if he wants to, but that's a really, really low tempo play. But he's going to go ahead and do it. Gets to develop a Zombie Chow alongside it. but not... And the Zombie Chow is not really what we want to play against the Handlock. No, not when they're at 24. You know, there's some merit where, like, you know, you're not ready for Molten Giants and you're starting to push them towards, like, 18, 17, where Molten Giants become a thing. And maybe you can play my Zombie Chow there and say, okay, buddy, you just you go back to 22 for now. I'm not ready to handle those Molten Giants just yet. But 24 up to 29 is not really a heal that you want to give the Handlock particularly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Now, 
you don't really have a really cool way to deal with this. I mean, you don't want to sacrifice minions. Uh, it's, it feels super bad. It does. If you do that and you heal your opponent to 29 and yourself and you are going down to 23 and leave two bombs up, uh huh. I feel it's like already lost. I mean, it kind of sets up a quartermaster for last turn, uh, for next turn, but you know, not really. Because no at least, way. yeah, at least two of these minions are going to die, and probably, in most realistic words, worlds at least a third as well. So, um, you know, maybe there was a crazy world where he attacked both boombots into the direwolf just to get it off the board. But yeah, we just see three of the tokens go down. So quartermaster not even looking particularly good next turn now. Mm -hmm. And what is interesting, he didn't see the Quartermaster last time, right? Mm -hmm. But he has to assume this is like a double Quartermaster deck. Yeah. Especially with the Dire Wolves. Yep. I mean, he does still have Hero Power Quartermaster here if he wants. He can play the Owl alongside it, which is pretty nice. I mean, I still don't get it. I still don't get the point in, in Dire Wolf. I, yeah, I, I'm not seeing it either. That's why I'm kind of saying the... Oh, sorry, he only had... Wait, what happened? This... Oh, yeah, yeah, he only has eight mana. I'm mistaken. Um, yeah, that's why I keep saying like there has to be something more to this deck that we just haven't seen drawn yet. Because he has so many cards that rely on uh, on on token flooding, and like, is what Paladin has enough already? I don't know. It's hard to say. Mm. Yeah. So, um, you have a pretty nice hand right now, but as we mentioned before, Jaraxxus is a pretty backbreaking card in this kind of matchup. Uh, similar to against Priest, really, where if you, you they just have no way of dealing burst damage to you, which is the only downside of being in Jaraxxus form, right? Otherwise, that form is 100% broken. The, yes. only, the only downside of it is that your maximum health is 15. So and you against, can't heal over there. Exactly. So against decks that can burst you, it's, it's a risky thing to do. Against decks that can't, they just cannot compete with Jaraxxus. So you kind of do not want Jaraxxus coming out of your hand. So I wouldn't be surprised if the minions get taunted here that are not the Void Caller. Just to allow him to Jaraxxus. Oh, he's actually not going to taunt at all. Okay, interesting. I was thinking about the Shadow Flame, to be honest. Yeah, Shadow Flame looked pretty decent to me as well. I mean, you're giving your opponent a... Yeah, exactly. Well, Malgana's next turn makes a decent 517 minion on board. Sure, yeah. Um... Which can be taunted up which makes it 618 million. And you saw one uh, equality already being played. And I believe, although the second equality was in hand the whole time for Roger, did he actually use it in the last game that we watched? Um, I'm not sure. I don't think he did. Because uh, nothing nothing really got played, did it? He just died from burst eventually. So I don't think yes, he had an opportunity I think that was to the equality case. anything. Mm -hmm. um, so Cypher doesn't actually know that the second equality is in the deck. Wow. Well, this will be huge, right? Will it be? Maybe it's not, it's not the case to play it. Uh, you can just Dark Bomb and attack with the Twilight Drake mm -hmm. to the Dr. Boom. Deal three damage. Wait, how much damage do you have? Seven? Yeah. Have... Ten? And Twelve damage. Uh, uh, yeah, twelve. Yeah, you're right. Hmm. Um, hmm. No, 12 is not quite getting the job done. Uh, yeah. Ancient, Ancient Watcher Shadow, Shadow Flame. Flame plus Dark Bomb. Uh, seems yeah, reasonable. seems decent. Um, Nothing dies. <laughs> yeah, there, there is just no chance that these minions are dying to Boom Box. Yeah. Not in any world. I mean, pre damage Draxus is like a scratch. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a flesh wound, as one of the characters from uh, Monty Python would say. So. Which is excellent actually in this British, game. Excellent British cultural reference there, Lothar. I love Monty sure. Python, man. Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm obligated to, though. I get deported if I don't like Monty Python. It's just the way to where? Uh, to anywhere that isn't Britain. Well, Australia is still like Britain, kind of, right? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Actual racism. Um, so, yeah, Owl followed by Doomguard. It's just going to seal the game. Tyrion, nothing to say against a, a lowly IMB cow, and the Doom Guard just comes down to, uh, to crush the game. Uh, Cypher brings it back to two and two. Well, we, we anticipated this outcome, right? It's yep. the, the matchup is so bad, so bad mm -hmm. for the Paladin, and that's actually what happened. You're not aggressive enough, and you're just being swept from the board mm -hmm. by the amount of back-breaking 
Shadow Flames, Hellfires, big minions with taunt. Yep. Yeah, that's it. And now we see a much more uh, even matchup. Although I will say, will say one card we have not seen drawn at any point in Roger's games, Aldor Peacekeeper. Oh. Maybe he's not playing that because he plays he Direwolf. He plays Direwolf and Abusive Sergeant. And Outdoor oh. Peacekeeper is a phenomenal card against Druid. It's one That's of the, it's it's one of the cards that really, really gives you, um, you know, probably a bit a slight favorite in the matchup for the for the mid-range Paladin. But without that card, you're going to struggle with, like, the amount of mid-range stuff that, that Druid can pump out. It's also, like, kind of important in the handlock matchup. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, nice curve for, for Cypher here. Um, wild Growth into Pilot Shredder into Druid of the Claw, and if at any point he picks up a Doctor Boom or an Ancient of Law, he has the Innovate to rush that out as well. So pretty great looking hand for uh, for Cypher. He does have the option to Innovate Pilot Shredder this turn if he really, really wants to, but I would doubt that is the case. I think holding on to the Innovate for a, for a potential 7-drop is a stronger play when you have as consistent a curve as you have right now. Uh, the other mm -hmm, option mm -hmm. is to Wrath the Knife Juggler right now, and then the next turn you can innovate Druid of the Claw, and then just follow a natural curve with uh, uh, with Pilot Shred of the turn after. But he has decided to go for yet another option, which is Wild Growth and innovate the Wrath, and then just follow the curve of his hand from 4 to 5. Interesting. So, uh, Druid, for the most part, fairly straightforward to play. You just kind of play the biggest minion in your hand most turns. Yeah, but... and you follow up the curve, right? Yeah, but the thing that's difficult is generally navigating through the opening turns correctly when you have ramp in your opening hand. So. Mm -hmm. Correct. Just goes to illustrate the amount of different options where, you know, I spotted three different ones which were all perfectly reasonable and Cypher went with a fourth which was totally justifiable as well. So. Hmm. A decent minion pops out. It's at least not one HP. Wow. Do you remember that parallel universe? Yeah. We talked yeah. About? Exactly. <laughs> it's actually happening. Have we been casting so long that we've actually slipped through a tear in space and time and we've entered a world where people play the Black Knight again? It's like an Under the Dome series, which is completely different from the book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, what? That turn looks really sad. It I mean, does. it feels bad, man. It does, yeah. Can we can we Photoshop the face on there? Just just get an overlay on just the feels bad man face on Tyrion's face right now. Yeah, it should be. There, there, there should be some like prepared stuff from yeah. production guys, like you know, just emotes, <laughs> the cards. Like, oh no, this counters me. Feels bad, man, on the face of Tyrion. Yeah. But yeah, Tree Silver looks like the only play this turn. Um, just to chow through this uh, this Druid of the Claw. And he, he's, he's starving the Druid of cards right now. Um, generally, when you're in this sort of um, situation against a Druid, when they've spent so many cards early on things like Innovate, you're basically just sat there praying and just go, okay, if I can just go one for one for a while and he doesn't hit his Ancient of Lore on turn seven, I might be in decent shape. Mm -hmm. And then in inevitably, they have Ancient of Lore on turn seven. So. Yeah. By the way, interesting point now. The Black Knight is a reactive card, which mm -hmm. probably will not see a play until turn 8 from your opponent. <laughs> and you're two turns ahead, so it's kind of bad. Yeah. And uh, But if this would be a Sylvanas, which is usually the 6-drop in um, Android's uh, deck, right? Then right. it dies to the Truce of a Champion and the small recruit. Sure. So it's not exactly the best option either. Mm -hmm. Do you know what would be a good option there? Grand Crusader. Yeah. Because at least then you get a Paladin card in your hand, right? Yeah, well, it's a Tyrion, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, maybe Hoy's onto something. Maybe Grand Crusader is the way forward. Hey! hey! Oh, look at that! <laughs> oh, Cypher's like, well, I knew it! Absolutely I knew it! Absolutely nailed it. <laughs> oh, and I picked me a hand too, which is useless against this deck. But... Oh, we did see Dr. Boom in the deck, right? So... <laughs> Entirely useless, but yeah, Murloc Knight is gonna murgle and gurgle. Wait, we did see Doctor Boom, I think. Yeah, we did see. We, we saw. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Um, so yeah, we do see the swipe in Cypher's hand just to clear out the Murloc Knight. But the the two three Murloc being spawned important that that wasn't something like a, a Grimscale Oracle or a Murloc Raider, i.e., one of the Murlocs with one health, so it doesn't just get mm -hmm. caught in a swipe here. So he yeah. is gonna get to retain some sort of board presence here if the swipe even happens. He might just. 
Go uh, for the Sylvanas, right? Yeah, choose just to up the tension of this board with the Sylvanas, but then the Murlocs start to go crazy, right? You're giving your opponent a second opportunity at rolling something insane like a Murloc Knight. Um, but if he gets the Murloc War Leader, that's actually kind of bad because it buffs up things into the range where uh, Sylvanas can make nice trades to steal things. Mm -hmm. so, Too bad you can't swipe your... Wait, 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 there's a pretty neat play with uh, Savage Raw Big Game Hunter, your own Sylvanas. Yeah, absolutely. That is definitely a viable option. Ooh. But now equality and ch charge the spider into it, right? You first hero power, though. E I mean, sorry, equality, but hero power. Yes. To, to make a new Murloc, maybe, let's say, a charger. Yeah. Because that's like 14 Murlocs, if I'm not mistaken, or 13, and two of them are chargers. I think that's only eight, isn't it? I think that's only like eight. Eight Murlocs? I think that's only like eight or nine or something like that. I remember counting it and it being less than I thought it was. Okay, well, I'm sure that Twitch that will tell us in 15 minutes. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on it. Uh, so what got stolen? Okay, the 2 1 uh, Cold Light Seer got stolen. Mm -hmm. You can silence it to buff it to 2 3. Whoa. Ooh, but swipe has to go down now. It's like the perfect turn. It's a pretty juicy swipe, right? And if you clear the board here, um, you're basically saying to your opponent, well, go ahead and Tyrion, right? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. you're, from your opponent's side, you're, you're relatively happy here because this is a pretty low tempo turn from the Druid in terms of what he could have done. So it's like, okay, you spent your whole turn clearing your board, clearing my board, now deal with Tyrion Cordry. And so yeah, and then... gonna say, okay! <laughs> None shall pass. Right. It's so. kind of sad. <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't I didn't see the Black Knight killing a Tyrion for, let's say, about half a year. That short? I was going to say since, like, I don't know, six months. Maybe that's about right. I mean, it's really, the, the, fly, the time flies faster in esports. It does, yeah. Basically, what we're saying, guys, is Black Knight has not been used for a while, and it's yeah. about to ruin Roger's life. Yeah, this is like dream crushing, elimination came, uh, elimin elimination card. Yep. It's like Yu-Gi-Oh moment. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, I got it. Slap, heart he, of the cards. He doesn't really boringly have lethal here, does he? Because that would be really disappointing. Does uh, he? Fifteen. Wait, nah, doesn't. No, he doesn't. Okay, Cypher, this this is the world's worst slow roll right now. Yeah, it's just windmill slam. Come on, oh, just like, can, we, yeah. can we just black knight that thing? Thank you. By the way, I like the uh, red black and animation more than. Ah, uh, yeah, me too. Yeah. And there's the greens. That was a mistake. <laughs> I mean, whose mistake was that? Because it it sounds kind of like yo, your play, your black knight was a mistake. Right. I. Yeah, hard to say, but double consecration is gonna do a decent job of removing this board at least, but no protection whatsoever against the combo which we see in Cypher's hand, so Cypher is gonna activate the classic Druid Force of Nature Savage Raw combo. And uh, well, he might just choose to Force of Nature, he might choose to Druid of the Claw Savage Raw, he can do whatever the hell he wants. The well, he will be M with the Savage Raw, right? Yeah. The important point is that Druid has tidied up this game, and Cypher has taken the series three games to two, and uh, joins the uh, existing players in our round of eight. Mm -hmm. And those existing players, uh, well, first of all, congrats to Cypher mm -hmm. for winning his um, round of 16. But now let me check the brackets. You can type exclamation mark bracket to get um, the link yourself. And it looks really cool. Just visit abiosgaming.com too. And um, let's see. Oh, actually, um, that's the matchup that will be facing Firebat. So... And Firebat has the full handle anti-handlock matchup. And Cypher, uh, Cypher was running handlock. Yes, I mean yep. demon lock, right? But yeah, it's but still, really Mal bad. Mal Malganis, boom, and two mountain giants. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's so. really horrible for for Cypher mm -hmm. for the next round. And the next match that we have is between Nairia from Tim Liquid versus Tom Six O Two Two Nine, and we'll be jumping into a quick break, like three or five minutes, and we'll.